as you can see, we'll be talking about data. And I think it makes sense because once you already listen about marketing and the neuroscience, you already tested those things, you want to know what does actually all this generate and how much important is for all of us. Quickly walking through what we'll be covering today, I'll introduce myself, you'll be shocked for them. Uh, what is big data? You might, must have heard this. We will, it's, it's a buzzword, but actually it is data. But I think if I have written this, what is data, you must have heard what is data. You all, all know what is data. So what is big data, how we can get value out of the, the data, or the big data, or the small data, or the tiny data, or the data. Uh, what you can do now, so even if you're not an analyst, how you can use the data and summarize at the end. Now, who is this? My younger sister, my daughter, my mum, my wife, no, me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was doing a campaign uh, to save the trees, and it was, I, was, I was five years old back in India. You can see I'm from India. Uh, so, yes, I'm pretty. <laughs> <laughs> Already married, so no office, please. <laughs> cool. <laughs> About me, I'm heading a small division of analytics, small but really powerful, uh, and really a number crunching people. Give them any Excel sheet, they'll come up with good insights for you. Uh, at Digital Annex, um, 11 years in digital analytics, marketing, slash insights. Unfortunately, a PhD in statistical modeling. And I've never heard anyone saying, this was an easy job for you, Academy. Anyone can do a PhD in statistics. <laughs> Is it? It was a really difficult job, to be honest. But yes, luckily, I got it in three years' time. And I'm in front of you. Uh, I've been spoken on many of similar type of workshops, conferences on digital, uh, digital marketing, big data analytics, basically sharing what we have learned so far and how you can get benefit out of all the learnings and experience. So what is big data? i show you a, a minute long video, which I'm not sure how I can play it, just to give an idea. I see companies all around the world. It's on me. And when you think about it, they're already making the same thing. Whatever else your company makes, it makes decisions. Which risk to take, which products to make, which customers to reach, and how to make them stay. On a smarter planet, the data is out there. Social data, mobile data, big data. With analytics, companies are using that data to inform their interactions, to help target customers in the Netherlands, manage investments in Canada, treat patients in China. I've seen analytics help some companies increase online revenue up to 50%. It's a smarter planet. Every decision maker can be a smarter one. Let's build a smarter planet. The idea from this video is to, to give you an idea how much data we are generating. You guys have generated more than one terabyte of data since you moved into this room. By switching on these lights, playing around those technical technologies, we playing this video and stuff, we speaking, we are generating data. Now what is big data is actually the combination of new sources who are generating data, RFIDs, web, social, mobile, and the new technologies. And when these two combine, you actually got new opportunities to play around and to get more customers, to convert more customers, whether online, whether offline, even when they're sleeping. Yeah, you can convert them. Uh, I won't show you how. <laughs> um, so how you can get value really out of the data? There are basically the three or four main areas you can actually crack on. First is by reducing the cost. Second is, I'm gonna explain, they are self-explanatory. By improving the revenue of existing products and services, new products and different markets, maybe international, data as a revenue stream. Don't spend on the marketing efforts, but actually spend on the data itself. And I'll show you how you can get value out of the data without spending more on the, on the marketing. What you can do as, as a digital marketing professionals or 
as a non digital marketing professional, what you can do, how you can play around with the, with the loads of data generated by your customers, your audience, or your users. Focus on non converting audience. And this is, this is the favorite word which I use, I think, 10 times a day that don't focus on people already converting. If I ask you, if anyone looks at the data, how much conversion rate is, is, is usually you got on a monthly basis? 2%, 3%, 5% if you're very lucky, if not Amazon. What about 95%? Why are they not converting? Have we ever produced anything to show off CEO? 95% are not converted because A, B, C, D are the reasons. We always show 5% is a conversion rate and they go happy and give you bonus. That's all. <laughs> show them 95%, they make you post CEO, which I don't know what you post may call. Okay, and what I mean by non converting, I'll show you a video in a minute, which actually explains how you can focus on those audiences which are not actually converting. And this is an official video which explains how it comes in the picture. Just try to understand what's happening here. This is a website. Yes, sure. Uh, yeah. Username? Oh, uh, Nick Ann? No. And then 1983? Zandy Pops? Sorry. <coughs> Zandy Pops? No, okay. Don't worry, I'll help. What's your postcode? Oh, it's a GU749ZT. Welcome back, Nick, forever. Uh, okay. Please, <laughs> yeah, just spread light on the screen before continuing with your post to the loaf of bread. If you do not, blah, blah, blah. blah. You also agree not to use any bread based product for any purpose of prohibited by United Kingdom law, including without limitation design, development, manufacture, or missiles, chemical, neutral, or biological weapons. Tick. I'm afraid you've timed out. What? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Hello? Excuse me. Oh, yeah. Hey. Just what, though, sir? Yeah, we just. What do you use, though? It's uh, Nick forever, but not the four, not the. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay, I'm just going to check that you're a real person. Could you say that for me? <laughs> <laughs> okay, how about this one? <laughs> Come on, forget it. <laughs> uh, eight pound pot of nice. You're in. Great, I'm in. Eight pounds eighty-five. It's supposed to be ninety-eight pounds. Plus express delivery. What's that? Oh, well, it's express delivery. Plus the <laughs> 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 That's four pounds ninety-nine. Why? Bread insurance. You didn't? I'll take the don't decline bread insurance option. You know what? I think I'll risk it. It is quite close to the sell by date. Don't care. Ninety-eight pence it is. If you want to pop back in five business days, it'll be ready for your collection. Well, I need it now, obviously. Oh, okay. Uh, you want the take home today price? That's three pounds twenty-seven. You know what? I'm gonna go. Come back soon. I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> so. This was a perfect example where we actually putting customers at danger of not coming back to us at all. And this is an example of real life funnel. We deal with the clients on a daily basis and we talk about how to convert the non-converting traffic, how to focus on those people who are not interested but how to make them into the marketing funnel. And the answer is 68% of clients, and I'm talking global clients, they are not collecting data correctly. When I say it correctly, they are they may be collecting the data, but they're not collecting what they should be collecting. And if because they're not collecting the data correctly, they won't get a chance to actually analyze the collected data. So as a result, they can't use any of the collected data to make any informed decisions to turn non-converters into converting traffic. What you should be measuring when it comes to convert the non-converting traffic? And people who deal with the data or don't deal with the data but must have looked at the reports, must see the reports, we should be looking for the information, not the numbers. Now, as an analyst, I should love numbers, but I hate numbers. I literally hate numbers. As a PhD, as a mathematical mathematician, no. The information behind the numbers is the key to people like us. How? I'll show you in a minute. Exit rate, all of us must be familiar with this metric. But I don't love this metric because. I'm after those elements which are actually responsible for this exit rate. There may be few elements on the web page which are actually responsible for making people exiting the page. Why not focus on these elements and have them on the dashboard rather than having a global exit rate? If you can bring five elements to down, down to two elements and then zero elements who are actually responsible for exit rate, then job done. Anyone have ever focused on 
average shopping cart value, people might be adding 10 different products, but might end up buying only one product. What are those reasons which make them throw out nine other products? Have we ever looked at consecutive shopping order values? No, we only focus on average order value. Yeah, this is very good, but to understand how you can convert the non-converting fault, you need to look around a bit deep in the bonnet. There is another video which is a similar one to actually explain how you can convert <coughs> the non-converting and basically roadblocks in the conversion. Hello, uh, just after semi skimmed milk. Your search for semi skim milk returned zero results. You don't find milk. Your search for milk returned 52,256 results. Your top hit, milk of magnesia. No. Milk floats of yesteryear. No. This milk team family wall planner. No, sorry, I'm, I'm just looking for, you know, normal milk. Couldn't find what you're looking for. That's what I'm saying. I can find it, so I'm asking you if you could. Advanced, sir. Alright, let's do this. Do you want? No. Oh. Uh, yeah, okay. Milk. Please narrow your search by using one of the following filters. Kayaks. Packet 12. Shelf cleaning. Breakfast in home. That one. Breakfast. One result. Milk. Skim semi. Semi skim milk. Tell us what I first asked you for. Uh, it's milk skim semi. This is a perfect example where we still have the inability where a human can talk to the computers. The way you design, the way you code, the way it speaks. Skim semi or semi semi skim can result in something like this. So you need to look at under the boner what is the actual problem and why your internal search on the website is actually not converting, which it should do. Another thing which is missing in the industry is the integrated version of the data. Uh, Sean and I think Duncan also mentioned that we should integrate the data, but we should definitely have one view of the, of the customer coming, data coming from all different sources, social media, demographics, testing, behavior, conversion. Can you name top 10 metrics or top five metrics to actually have in one dashboard? It's difficult, but that's all we want. That's all we want, an integrated approach to have one dashboard covering all or most different data sources to actually get one, well, one view. The second thing to actually focus on um, and converting non commercial traffic is to analyze the what. We usually analyze visitor behavior, but another important thing to analyze is visitor feedback, which is still not there. We've got a few vendors out there who are helping companies, but it's still not getting into the nerves of the clients out there that they should, they should actually capture or they should give important visitor feedback. Why? Because visitor feedback could be anything. Could be positive, could be negative. Could be constructive criticism, could be destructive. How you can change this destructive to a conditional phrase, or to one conditional phrase. That's the challenge for a digital marketer. Whether you're selling a card, or whether you're selling a, a shampoo online, there is a chance that things go wrong, and this is where you need to capture all the feedback from your customers and uh, users. When you do so, things do change. We did some uh, tests, and things change from this to this. And you can imagine, even without saying anything to your customers, they know how good they are, how bad you were, and how good you are now. Things do change on their own, because search engines like Google who are everything on the web, they do show these ratings online when you start collecting your customers' feedback and behavior. <coughs> uh, I've got a couple of case studies here which explains how you can actually put your data back into the practice. This one is a European case study. How can I play this? Now, okay, let's play this one then. Okay. Example comes from Google searches. There are about a billion of them a day. 
And one thing they learned is that when someone's kid is sick, they start typing in words related to the flu in Google. It becomes a really good predictor of a hospital emergency room visits related to flu-like symptoms. And it provides a better heads up about where the flu is going to come next about a week quicker than the best predictions from the Centers for Disease Control in America. We have to keep in mind that while there are all of these different privacy concerns, and many of them quite valid, there is huge potential here to use that kind of data for good. We did a uh, project uh, last year with a company in Massachusetts, Princeton Hexagon, where we actually looked at two years of Twitter data in Indonesia um, and looked at conversations around the price of rice. And what we found is that if you actually do nothing more than count the number of tweets coming from Indonesia that talk about the price of rice, the graph, the curve of the graph, basically matches that of official food price statistics. But you can get that data in real time and you can get it essentially free. So the point is, have you ever looked at the, what data we generating from social media? I mean, we, we have got a retail black brand sitting here. To be honest, on personally speaking, we do talk to the friends and families about what we bought, what we shop online. I think, if not more than at least 5% of our time, every week is actually going to the shopping in one of the retail stores out there. Have you ever decided, or have you ever tried to look at what, how much data we're generating, how much data people are generating, what they're saying about us when they're actually working out, where they're looking, what, is, what are the most important areas, can we do something like that digitally when we actually uh, want to bring new products onto the store or something similar as soon as a new product comes to the market and as soon as people walking, screens start changing and they actually notice, okay, I'm walking and it's changing. So have you ever thought about bringing digital <coughs> into the offline systems? So top five things from me for today for you to take back, whether you are an analyst or you are a number cruncher or you, you are a marketing manager, these five things applicable to all of you here. First, execute conversion analytics, not just data analytics. Whatever you do, whatever report you ask from your analyst or whatever report you uh, prepare, think about is it improving the conversion? If not, forget about it. And think about how you can bring conversion. Second thing is invest in data analysis rather than on bringing new traffic. As Sean mentioned, leaking bucket. We're spending more money on Google AdWords, <laughs> don't believe me, uh, but we're missing how much we're actually converting through, through AdWords or uh, paid ads. Same traffic, more conversions. Going back to the same funder, uh, focus on non-converting traffic. Third one, you should make sure that all of your digital assets are tagged or tracked <coughs> properly. No matter whatever tool you're using, whether it's Google Analytics or whether it's Adobe Analytics, whether it's web trends or core metrics, but make sure they're tagged properly. Any single mistake, any non-tracked campaign is a waste campaign because if, you, if you're unable to track the campaign, what's the user doing it? You can't, you can't measure what's the performance. Fourth is focus on relevant and contextual data than everything. You don't need to track or you don't need to bring data with respect to every single link or interaction of your user you need to make sure that you are actually capturing the most important parts of your digital assets so you don't miss them. It's not about everything, it's about the relevancy. And the last is, I already mentioned this, concentrate on the non-converting traffic than just converting traffic. Next time when you look at the report, do ask for five main reasons from the analysts why people aren't converting. What are the main reasons? That's it and let them think about and come up with something regarding non commodity traffic. This is all. Thank you. Thank you very much, Okay, so that's pretty much the end of the presentations. Hopefully you've learned a bit more about neuroscience. Hopefully you found big data interesting. Um, we're on the question and answer session now, so I'll start with a question. Would you like to ask any of the panelists questions, or would you like to go and try the experiences? So, has anyone got a question? That is Michael Jackson, what it is, but has anyone got a question? I was told I wouldn't get a question out of the audience today, and I'm, I'm almost determined to squeeze this question out. But, um, okay, it's not going to work. 
So no questions. So what I say is the panelists are around. If you want to speak to them individually about anything, sort of uh, ask them for more information or what they want to do. If you haven't tried the, the experiences yet, please try and do so. We're hanging around. They're not allowed to escape. I think it's more coffees and teas over there. And um, beer. Uh, yeah. oh, on behalf of us, um, on my lab, it's Digital Landix, thank you very much. And you know, thank you from us to Isabel uh, for asking us over to leave. It's nice to meet you all.